Hello. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, 36162, Making Sense of Gender at Brandon University. Uh, my name is Dr. Crookston. You can call me Cameron, and I will be your course instructor for this uh, semester. Uh, I do want to start off by apologizing that we're not able to meet uh, synchronously or live for this first session. Um, for those of you who are taking the class asynchronously, this is business as usual, um, but normally there will be the option to take it synchronously. We'll get to that very soon. Um, as I explained in the email that I sent you, um, there's a bit of a backlog right now with IT support services. They haven't set us up with a Zoom account. Um, I do hope they're able to do that, like hopefully by tomorrow, um, maybe even later today. Um, we'll kind of just roll with the punches and take it from there and I will be in contact. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to give this first lecture, uh, which introduces the course. Uh, in this recording. Uh, when I'm done, we'll take about a five minute break and then we'll meet in the Zoom room uh, through the link that I sent you in this email. Uh, if you want to watch this video ahead of time, I sent it out a few hours early, that's fine. You can do that. Just make sure you note at the end of this video when I ask you to join us in the Zoom room if you are joining us uh, synchronously. Uh, if you have any questions about this kind of logistic stuff, you can shoot me an email right now um, or you can ask me in the Zoom class because it'll be primarily a Q&A. Uh, yeah, so let's get going. So um, first of all, uh, today, as I said, in the recorded session that you're watching now, I'm going to go over the logistics of the class, introduce you to the class, talk about the class schedule, go over assignments, um, a few core concepts that we're going to be dealing with, um, and that will be the recording. Uh, when we meet in the Zoom, uh, I will go over things again a little bit just to elaborate um, live, and primarily I'll give you a chance to uh, ask some questions. Uh, if you have any. Uh, for the remainder of the class after that, I'm actually going to give you the time um, as kind of a study hall so that you can get started on the readings for tomorrow and hopefully the rest of the week. Um, because this is a condensed class, we move pretty quickly. Um, and so I want to give you a bit of a head start um, on your reading for the week. Uh, I also want to acknowledge that I am going to accidentally refer to tomorrow as next week all the time because I'm used to teaching um, in the fall and winter. Uh, I'll try and catch myself and I'll try and learn to say tomorrow instead of next week. But if I if I slip up, that's the origin of that. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. There we go. Normally I'd say, can you see it? But you can't tell me. Um, I hope you can. Yes. Okay, great. So yes, making sense of gender and introduction. So again, uh, Dr. Cameron Crookston is who I am. You can email me any questions at any time, uh, crookstonc at brandonu.ca. Um, I will do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, if you are emailing me between class on Thursday and class on Monday, my policy is 24 hours or sooner, but it may take me a little longer on those days. Um, but if you email me between classes, I will try and do it um, as quickly as possible. It kind of just depends on volume. Um, if you'd like to speak to me uh, synchronously, I do have office hours uh, every day before class. Uh, every day there is class before class uh, from 12 to 1. Uh, you'll find the Zoom link for that and the password on the syllabus. Um, and uh, it is first come, first serve. So uh, you will just kind of, if you have to, if I'm seeing someone else, uh, you'll be asked to wait in the waiting room. Um, if you do want to book an appointment, um, for a specific time or a time potentially outside of that, if it doesn't work for you, um, email me. We can totally find another time to meet and chat. Uh, so again, the logistics of synchronous versus asynchronous delivery. Uh, this class is being offered, in theory, both ways. Uh, it's totally your choice. Um, I have no personal preference. It does not affect your grade. And it really shouldn't affect your ability to engage with any of the material. Um, you know what works best for you. Uh, we're all kind of dealing with different things during COVID. So just kind of make the best choice for what your needs are. Um, and we'll go from there. Some things that I think are worth uh, just considering. Um, these are very general things. Everyone will have uh, more personal issues uh, as to why they pick one or the other, but some things to consider. Synchronous learning, uh, you do have the option of asking questions in real time. Um, in Zoom, you can kind of ask me something on the fly. Um, you get to interact with your fellow classmates. You can either do this out loud or in the chat. Um, if you are doing synchronous learning, again, the class is condensed. It's a lot of screen time. Um, be mindful of how long you're sitting in front of your computer. Um, it's good to space out the time you're doing that. Readings, um, there may be times, I will try and program in times to the daily classes, which are non-screen time where you can just listen. Um, and uh, sessions can be quite long. So to take that into account, 
Um, you can also opt to do a mix of synchronous and asynchronous. So you might say that you primarily want to do this synchronously, but if you really need a break from a screen, um, you can use the asynchronous options. It doesn't have to be um, one or the other, and you can change your mind as you go. If you are doing the class asynchronously, again, which is totally your option, um, all the lectures will be provided. Uh, I'm uploading them to YouTube, and then they'll be linked to Moodle, so you'll get access to them you know, less than an hour after class finishes um, with asynchronous learning. Obviously, you get to work around your own schedule, um, and you have the potential to space out classes if you don't want to do a lecture um, in the kind of the in real time. Um, you can take breaks on your own schedule. The downsides are um, there is, uh, unfortunately, we don't put up the group chat in the recordings. So you won't see the kind of class discussion, um, although you will hear me say anything out loud because I will read, I'll try to read everything in the, in the chat. Um, if you do want to engage with me, which I really, really encourage everyone to do, um, you have to do this uh, through office hours or an email. Um, and then I think probably the biggest one is to just be aware of your own scheduling. Um, doing a class asynchronously means you are doing self-directed learning. I've said this about 40 times already. The class moves very quickly. It is a condensed schedule. Um, and so you really have to make sure that you are not falling behind um, because you don't have me in real time kind of um, keeping up the pace. So uh, those are some things to consider. Um, again, if you have questions about this, I would love to talk. Um, I, I will just kind of pause to also say that um, emailing me and office hours are a really good thing. And I want to encourage you not to think of office hours as like the principal's office. Um, office hours, it's not a place you have to go to if you're like in trouble or things are going poorly with an assignment. You can come to me for those things, um, but you can also just come to brainstorm an assignment you're working on. If you, you know, had something you wanted to share, but you didn't want to say it in class for whatever reason, um, you can just, you know, drop in and chat with me for a little bit. Um, specifically, I think this is really helpful um, in terms of feeling connected to the material because it's, it's quite hard to do um, when we're all on computers. Um, and it's really helpful around assignments, even if, you know, you think it's going well and you just want to kind of like bounce some ideas off me. I generally find students who come to office hours to talk about an assignment or assignments um, do about 10% better in terms of grades. So if you're looking to kind of maximize your grade output, office hours, I recommend. Okay, the good stuff. Uh, so what's this class about? So this class, Making Sense of Gender, uh, we're going to look at the concept of gender. Uh, what is gender? Uh, what does gender do and how do we do gender? Um, it's actually a focus of tomorrow. The concept of the gender is something that you do and that will come up uh, again and again as we go on. Um, this will also provide you uh, a grounding in gender studies. So if you do end up taking more classes in women and gender studies, um, this class is here to provide you a foundation in some of the concepts and theory. Um, more specifically, but still pretty generally, we're gonna look at uh, the politics of gender, how gender affects our lives, um, how gender interacts with other identities like race, ethnicity, sexuality, and class. <sighs> Turn off your phones. Um, uh, yeah, so again, uh, if, you, if you do take further gender classes, I hope this provides you a grounding and a basis. Um, but if you never take another gender studies class, you should still uh, get a certain awareness and familiarity with the way gender operates in the world. Um, specifically like a socio-political understanding of gender, and we'll, we'll talk about what that means as we go on. Some of the uh, learning goals I have for the course, and this has informed the way I've designed uh, both the readings and the assignments, is by the end of the class, I want you to develop a socio-political understanding of gender. So how gender interacts with and affects um, social and political issues. Um, you'll be able to understand and apply the concept of intersectionality. We will get to that. Uh, you'll be able to critically analyze and articulate media representations of gender. Um, one of the themes I'm exploring in the class is the way that media is used to teach people about gender, uh, the way representation impacts gender. So that will kind of, we, we do one specific week on gender and media, but media will come up again and again. We're also watching a lot of things. And finally, you should be able to understand the difference between summary and synthesis and apply this to academic writing. Um, that will mostly be in your term paper, but we will talk about that when we get there. Um, so those are, those are the big ones. Okay, so logistics, uh, course reading. So yes, there are readings in this class. You will do them, please. Uh, so the main textbook for the class is um, Margaret Hobbs and Carla Rice's Gender and Women's Studies. Uh, it's an anthology. 
uh, it's a really, I really like this anthology. It does a really good job of balancing kind of um, global gender studies with a Canadian focus. So I picked it largely because it balances that well. Um, it is available, excuse me, through the Brendan U Library. The link is here. The link is also on your syllabus. The link will be on uh, Moodle. Link is everywhere. Um, if there are readings, there are readings. Uh, that aren't available in this text. And for those, I will simply upload those as a PDF to Moodle, like I already have. Um, you will also need a Netflix account uh, for some of the viewings in this class. So you should make sure that you have an active Netflix account for the next three weeks. Um, we'll also be watching some films. Uh, yes, just the films, all the TVs on Netflix. Um, some films uh, are available through the Brandon University online portals. Um, for those, I will simply link the direct link into Moodle and you'll be uh, taken to that. I will say about the viewings, um, we will watch them in class in real time because I do like to have a post viewing discussion. Um, those won't, unfortunately for copyright reasons, that doesn't show up in the recordings. So if you are watching the asynchronous thing, you will unfortunately get like a black screen for an hour or so. Um, so if you're doing it asynchronously, you, you definitely do need um, uh, a Netflix account as well as the links. Um, but also, even if you are doing everything synchronously, um, to really write about anything uh, media related in detail, you, you should be going back to it. So if your term paper or anything else um, does engage with a, a viewing, you will need access to rewatch specific scenes. Um, so yeah, so everyone should get those. Uh, okay, so as I mentioned, Moodle is a uh, our primary interface for how I'm giving you all the stuff you need to succeed. Um, so our Moodle key, uh, this was also in the email, is hyena for porcupine. That was auto-generated. I think I probably could change it, but I don't want to because I like it. Um, so on Moodle, uh, you will find resources like the syllabus. I did email it to you, but should you lose track of that, um, it, is, it is on Moodle. Um, I will link, um, so I think, I hope everyone is familiar with Moodle, but if you're not, Moodle gives like a breakdown of each day of um, our lectures. And within that, I can upload articles and links. So I will always put your YouTube uh, version of the lecture into the Moodle. That's how you find it. Um, readings that are not available in Women and Gender Studies, uh, the textbook will be on uh, the Moodle. Uh, links to viewing is not available on Netflix will be on Moodle. Um, every time you submit an assignment, you will do it through Moodle, including your final exam. And I will also use Moodle to make announcements. Um, I'll try not to blow up your email boxes just because we get a lot of emails and I think it's a lot easier for you to keep track if you have one place you go to for this class. So I will ask you to check in with Moodle daily. Um, you'll have to do it anyway to get all your readings. So like, why not just keep an eye on that announcement page? Um, a note on the syllabus and the readings. So as I mentioned, most of the readings are available in the textbook, Gender and Women's Studies. Um, and so for those weeks, those days where the reading is in, um, is in a textbook, there will be nothing, uh, there will be no readings in the Moodle block. Um, and uh, sometimes there's one of each. So you might see one reading in the Moodle um, and think that's the only reading, but there might actually be one in, uh, in the uh, textbook. So I would say uh, very much check the syllabus every day just to make sure you know where the readings are. Um, if that is confusing, we can talk about that. It, it shouldn't be, but I might have explained it in a confusing way. Um, I'll also make announcements at the end of every class, reminding you what you need to read and where you need to get it from. Um, but I think the syllabus outlines it pretty well. Um, so one thing to be aware of before I get into the specifics of uh, all of our classes is that because this class is dealing with um, political issues around gender, because it deals with sex, sexuality, um, race, social justice issues, um, there are potentially things that might be triggering to someone and that will um, affect us in different ways. So um, I want you to be aware of that. Um, and I want you to familiarize yourself with the syllabus so that if there is anything you are concerned about, um, you can make an informed choice as to whether or not you engage with that particular film or reading. Um, if there is something that you are not comfortable engaging with, that is okay. Um, it is possible to fulfill all the needs of this class to do the assignments without uh, engaging one or two of the readings. If you find that more than two readings are really giving you pause and you're not able to engage with them or more than one of the viewings, um, check in with me 
because that that could be uh, something we have to have a conversation about. Um, I also ask that everyone is aware of their point of entry into the material. Um, keep in mind that what might be a purely hypothetical thought experiment for you is someone else's lived reality, is someone else's daily life. Um, so the way that we come with those things are going to be really different. Conversely, you might have you might be really familiar with the concept and a classmate might have never encountered it before. Um, we come with different experience and knowledge. We come with inherent biases. That's just kind of part of doing this work. Um, and so I ask us to be mindful of the way that our experiences um, are different from other people. Um, I assume, and I ask us all to assume that everyone in this digital space is coming in with high regard, that we are uh, respectful for the collective dignity, safety, and humanity of everyone in the class and on the syllabus um, and coming. And, and so if someone does make a comment, we give them the benefit of the doubt that they are coming from a place of high regard. If I feel that is not the case, I will intervene, um, particularly any language or behavior uh, that evokes sexism, racism, homophobia, transphobia, ableism, classes, language um, will not be tolerated and I will ask the person to leave. Um, the last two things about this are keep in mind that this is a place to learn and ask questions. Um, this is an introductory class. Um, so I don't expect anyone to have any mastery over this stuff. That's kind of the point. So this should be a space to ask questions about things. Um, I also ask that we think critically about everything. So keep in mind that anything we bring up in the class will be talked about critically. Um, so just kind of be aware of, uh, of what your boundaries might be about something. Um, again, you don't have to talk about anything you don't want to talk about. And if you have any questions or just want to talk about something and class did not feel like the place to do that, please come to office hours or you can just email me. Okay, the class schedule. Uh, let me bring up the syllabus, which I definitely should have opened sooner. Okay. So, oh, I hope you can see this. Okay, so uh, the first week, uh, it is a week, uh, is scheduled around introduction and foundations of gender studies. So we're going to look at some of the core concepts that will be guiding potentially your whole journey through gender studies, should you go on such a journey, um, but definitely are going to be key and instrumental in the following weeks. One thing to note about this class is this is what we call a survey class, um, which means we're giving you a, a sample platter and an introduction to a lot of broader ideas. Um, there are many classes, or there are many like individual days that we could do a full 12 classes on. Um, we're doing a week on gender and media. I have taught full classes on gender and media and we're gonna do it in a day. Um, so the downside of this is sometimes we're only able to kind of introduce you to an idea. We aren't able to go as maybe deep as we might want to go. Um, the plus side of, of covering this much ground in one class is that we can actually look at patterns and relationships between concepts. Um, a lot of this class is scaffolded, which is to say I will introduce concepts that will come up repeatedly. Um, feminism will come up long after the third day of class. Um, things like uh, critical race theory will be covered in multiple classes, and you'll get to kind of see how different things interact with each other. Um, so that's something to keep in mind of the class, is that like look for themes um, and be aware of how certain weeks kind of talk to each other. Okay, so yes, the first week is intro introducing you to concepts. Um, today, we're going over the class uh, schedule and tomorrow, Tuesday, we'll be looking at uh, basic social and medical constructions of gender. This will kind of introduce us to the, the basic concepts of gender, um, help us to grapple with some language, uh, then we're looking at feminism, feminism as a movement, feminism uh, historically. We'll also be doing our, our first viewing, um, Feminist, What Were They Thinking?, uh, which is available on Netflix. Uh, and then we're folding out the week uh, with gender and media. We're going to look at um, some history of gender representation in media, specifically television, um, again, because it is one week um, and we could easily do uh, a whole week on film, a whole week on uh, music. I picked television, um, but you can certainly apply that to other things. We'll also be doing our second viewing, which is an episode of Modern Family. Um, and uh, your first reading responses do, I, I'll get to the assignments later, so maybe I won't mention those right now. 
Um, week two, we're looking at gender and justice. So we start out with intersectionality. We're looking at colonialism, gender and health, and also gender and violence. Um, again, these are um, very intense issues. Uh, we're looking at a lot of things that affect people's lives in a very serious way. They may affect the lives of people uh, who are part of our classroom community. Um, and I'm aware that this is challenging work. So I ask us all to go in respectfully um, and to do our best to engage with the material um, as best we can. And in the last week, uh, we're looking at um, queer theory and trans studies. So part of this is looking at uh, the relationship between gender studies and queer theory as academic disciplines, because a lot of queer theory and LGBT studies um, kind of grew out of gender studies and feminism. Um, so for example, the formativity, which is like what made Judith Butler famous, uh, we're looking at that. We'll also be watching an episode of RuPaul's Drag Race season one with that fun filter. Um, and then we're also looking at gender and sexuality as identity constructs um, and the history of trans identities. And then on the last day, we're just gonna do a conclusion and wrap it all up. Um, there will be no readings for that. Uh, I will introduce you to your final exam. Um, we'll probably talk about the exam a little earlier, but that will be kind of the main focus of that last day. Um, we'll also hand in a term paper, I'll get to that. Okay, and now we go back. Okay, so what will class look like on any given day? Uh, so we will start off uh, much like this with um, me giving something of a lecture. Uh, I will actually begin by asking you to, uh, if you're comfortable doing so, uh, well, first of all, okay. Every day I will ask you to bring one to three discussion questions for class. Um, I will ask you to have those whether or not you share them. If you are willing to share them, you can put them in the Zoom chat. Um, you can put them publicly or you can send them to me privately. Um, and that's the first thing we'll do at every class is just kind of do a check-in with everyone's discussion questions. Um, it'll give me a great sense of how everyone is feeling about the material. And it does help me kind of steer my lecture and also our discussion. Um, then I will go into my uh, lecture and PowerPoint, uh, which I'm doing now. Um, I'll start every week off with some key terms that I'd like you to kind of trace through the lecture or the discussion. Um, some of them you might already know from the reading, some of them I will cover, some of them we might, we might find together. Um, at various points after I'm done, uh, depending on if we're doing a class viewing, um, how long my lecture has taken, uh, we might do some small group discussion activities. So I might get you to do what I call one minute papers. I'm not super, they don't have to be a minute. Um, these are chances for you to basically like write something quickly uh, that gives you a chance to reflect on the material. Um, it gives you a chance to um, practice some critical thinking and also rather than putting you on the spot to think, ask questions or give responses, it, it gives you kind of a low stakes environment to do that. Um, cannot stress enough, these are not graded. These are just to generate a uh, discussion. Um, I might also do uh, small group discussions in which I send you into um, uh, breakout rooms. Um, that kind of depends on how many people are coming to the synchronous sessions, um, how we're kind of feeling as a collective, but that is definitely an option. And again, I think it is a way for you to talk about things with each other and to kind of practice ideas um, without worrying about me grading you. Again, not grading that. Uh, and then in, uh, I think, slightly less than half the classes, we will be watching something. Um, some are movies, upwards of an hour and a half. Some are episodes of TV shows, which are typically shorter. And we'll take it from there. And again, we will usually do this. Um, screenings will usually happen kind of in the middle uh, or possibly at the very beginning, depending on the length, um, so that we can have a chance to analyze them as a group afterwards. Um, sometimes I'll do my lecture after if it feels like a better fit, but we'll go from there. Participation. How do you participate in an online classroom? What a great question. So there's lots of options. Um, and just, just to say it once again, none of them are graded. Um, participation is a really good way for you to engage with the material and get more out of the material. You will learn more if you actively engage with this stuff. Um, passive viewing and reading, just kind of like scientifically speaking, um, does not penetrate as well. Um, so if you can find a way to actively participate, you will get more out of this class, probably like it more, and you'll do better in your actual assignments, which are graded. So um, in our synchronous classes, you can raise your hand to ask a question. Um, and I will kind of call on you to say like, hey, you have your hand raised, would you like to say something? Um, you can also make a comment. 
in, uh, you can also make a comment or ask questions in the chat. Um, again, the chat is open to everyone. Uh, I will do my very, very best to keep an eye on it and read it out loud as I go. Again, it kind of depends on the traffic volume. Um, I won't be able to, I think, when I am screen sharing. So, um, but you're free to ask questions as I'm lecturing and I will do like a little check after to see all the fun things you've said. Um, you can also just send me a private question in the chat if you, if you have something that you don't want the class to see, but you, you want answered. And then again, I'm gonna say it again, um, email me between classes. That is a form of participation. Um, asking questions are a form of participation, or you can come to office hours. Um, if you're not comfortable uh, sharing in class or you're taking the class asynchronously, um, you can still get like a full, um, full like interactive experience uh, through email and office hours. So you should feel free to kind of pick and mix which options work best for you. You can do all of these, you can do one of them, but I do really recommend that everyone find a way to participate so that you do well in the class. So some notes for those of you who are going to be joining us uh, synchronously as soon as that's possible. Um, so first of all, turning on your camera is completely optional and not required. Um, some people prefer this and it just makes them feel more in the room. Some people don't like to do this. I personally do not have a preference. Um, I do it because I talk a lot in the class and, and I, I like to kind of have a face so you can see me. Um, I do ask if you have your um, camera on that you refrain from eating, texting, or smoking while you're on camera because this can be distracting. Um, if you have your camera on, everyone can see you. Um, and that's great because they can interact with you, but we're going to try not and distract each other. Um, if you need to grab something or eat something during class, which is totally fine, three hours is a long time, just turn off your camera. Um, if you walk away from your desk, it's usually a good thing too, to turn off your camera. Um, if you do share your space and you need to interact with other people, people kind of come into your, the room you're in, um, or you're, you're just not able to kind of have um, no one else in the room while you're in class. Um, again, I ask you to turn off your camera just because it can be distracting. Um, the chat feature is really, really great way to ask questions or kind of like post, you know, if you have a fun link that is relevant to the class. Um, or if you just have a comment, uh, I'm going to ask you to keep this on topic and refrain from kind of casual side conversations or responses. Um, avoid treating this like the comment section. So um, only put anything in the chat that you would actually say out loud uh, in a classroom. Um, anything you put in the chat, I will potentially say out loud because I assume you want people to see it. Um, but it can be I think sometimes um, tempting to treat the chat function like, you know, comments on, on social media. And that's really not what it's here for. Like we're in a classroom space. Um, so uh, this should be not necessarily formal, but not too casual in terms of commenting. Um, so just kind of like random shout outs and um, responses um, that maybe aren't part of the conversation. I'm gonna ask you to, to not engage with. And if I do see that happening, I will. Um, Ask you to stop. Okay, so there are four assignments for this class. Um, there is a reading response. Uh, you actually do three reading responses, one every week for a total of 50% of your grade. You will do a media reflection assignments for 20% of your grade. There is a term paper due on the last day of class for 35% of your grade. And there's a final exam, which is the Tuesday after Victoria Day weekend, which is after our class ends, um, you will do it online and it will be 30% of your grade. So um, I'm going to focus on the first two, uh, which are reading response and media reflection, because you'll be dealing with them in the first week. The other ones we will get to in a little more detail uh, as we go on, but I will give you plenty of time uh, to work on those. Um, so reading response you will send to me at the end of the day every Thursday. So this Thursday, next Thursday, and the final Thursday, and I will remind you. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, every class you should be coming with one to three discussion questions. So by the end of the week, you have at least four discussion questions that you've ramped up. Um, so every Thursday, I will ask you to uh, upload to Moodle um, two of those discussion questions. You can pick any two, I do not care. Um, two discussion questions. I'd also like you to take one of those definitions of a key term. Remember, every uh, beginning of every class, I will post some key terms I want you to uh, kind of keep an eye out for. Um, so you'll send me uh, in your Moodle 
uh, posting one of those key terms with your definition of it. I'm then going to ask you to write a very, very short synopsis of any of the readings from the week. Um, you can pick any reading, and I do not care, something you connected with, something you understood, um, something you liked, and uh, give me a one to two sentence summary of what this reading was about. Um, so uh, keep in mind, you are only graded on what you upload. So when you ask those questions, if you ask those questions in uh, class, you are uh, not graded on that. I'm also not grading you on the quality of the questions, to be honest. Um, assuming you've put some work into it, I mean, if the question is like, what's the deal with, actually, that might even be fine. Yeah, what's the deal with Judith Butler? I would accept that. Um, I am truly just grading on if you have done the thing. So if your response includes two discussion questions from the week's readings, uh, one key term definition from lecture, and one short summary of any of the readings from that week's, that's what I'm looking for. I will repeat that again as we go along. Um, and if you have questions, I'm happy to hear them. Um, the next assignment that you will have is a uh, video reflection, which is going to be due a week from today, Monday, May the 10th. Um, I'm gonna ask you to select a piece of media or pop culture from your daily life and analyze the representation or connection to gender. Um, you can choose anything you watch, uh, a TV show, a music video, a video, a meme, a tweet, Instagram post, a TikTok. I, it's, it's whatever interests you, pick something you like or pick something that frustrates you that you don't like, that you have strong feelings about, um, but pick something that interests you to write about. Um, I'm gonna ask you to provide some uh, connection to concepts from class. Um, you're probably gonna mostly focus on, um, well, you will focus on the first week because this is due in the second week. Um, so the first week we talk about um, concepts of gender, feminism, and the way gender is represented in the media. Using one of those or something in those discussions, I'm gonna ask you to analyze your piece of pop culture. Um, if you can send me a link to the thing, that's great so I can see it. If it's an episode of a TV show or movie, that's fine. Just tell me what it is. Um, this is 500 words. Uh, you do not need to cite uh, using academic citing. You do not need to cite using academic citing, um, but you should just kind of make sure you are engaging with the readings um, and referencing them by name. Uh, we'll discuss this a little more on Thursday uh, and it is due the following Monday. So you'll have the weekend to do it. Um, academic integrity is something we should all be aware of. Um, academic integrity is not tolerated, and this is coming down from the university in addition to my own feelings about academic integrity. Um, if you commit an offense of academic integrity, the, the consequences can be pretty dire from failing the class to expulsion. Um, so what is academic integrity? So um, most people are aware of plagiarism. Plagiarism is appropriating someone else's work or ideas as your own or failing to cite the source. So if you copy and paste from a website and put that in an essay and claim that it is your writing, that is plagiarism. Um, but also uh, quoting someone, giving no reference to where it is from is still a form of plagiarism. Forgery, um, kind of misrepresenting official documents or notes for the university academic integrity, um, unauthorized submissions. So taking something you've written for another class and resubmitting it to this class is not permitted. Um, writing someone else's assignment for them is not permitted. Um, impersonating, pretending to be another student to submit their work or in class. Both of you can get in actually quite a bit of trouble for that. So um, please do not do these things. Um, again, in my experience, I find that students who go to academic uh, integrity uh, violation. So someone who kind of engages in plagiarism, it usually comes from a place of panic. It's the last minute, you're not sure what to do. You're worried you're not going to submit an assignment and you make a bad choice. Uh, I mean, not you, but someone. Um, I would ask that in those moments of panic, instead you reach out to me and you say, Cameron, I am panicking about this assignment and I don't know what to do. And we will find a way better option um, than one of these. These are not good options. Okay. So um, getting to the end here, some key terms I'd like you to think about. Um, and I will talk about these a little more when we meet live. Um, but uh, yeah, some, some key terms that I think are helpful in the first week moving forward. So critical thinking. Um, critical thinking means uh, that we think critically uh, about the topics we're looking at. So um, we observe things um, rather than making assumptions. And we question the assumptions we have because we all have assumptions. We all have biases. 
Um, there used to be a time in academia where people really thought that it was possible to be fully objective 100%. So um, that's no longer really considered terribly valid. We understand that we all come with biases and it's much more important that we learn to uh, be critical of them. Um, critical thinking is also about looking at research and considering data and uh, really questioning um, kind of common sense or common knowledge or what we think we have heard from more general sources. Um, we are going to be dealing both with very um, charged topics and also topics from kind of daily life. We do look at media stuff here. We do look at popular culture. And we might be dealing with things that you're quite familiar with and might not be used to kind of putting under the microscope. So I ask you to kind of stick with the tour on that one. Uh, positionality. Um, positionality is an academic term. We will come back to it a few times. Um, positionality asks how my experience and existing knowledge impacts my point of entry into a topic. Um, again, everyone comes at these uh, questions and these topics with their own experience and that influences your point of entry and that's okay. It's inevitable, frankly, um, but it's important that we're aware of what that is. Uh, anecdotal evidence this is a big one. Um, so is this an observable pattern or a single occurrence? What is my positionality to this evidence? Um, so anecdotal evidence is something we try to avoid to do as much as possible in academia. Um, academic references and academic research does tend to look for established patterns to point to something. Um, anecdotal evidence tends to be kind of single one-off events um, that uh, people might take to be uh, self-evident of, of a pattern, um, which is not necessarily the case. Anecdotal evidence, evidence that come from anecdotes also tend to be firsthand accounts, and so we don't necessarily have the most distance from it. Um, so one example of anecdotal evidence might be, you know, my nephew likes to wear blue and plays with trucks, therefore gender is not performative. Um, and we'll get to that in the week we do performativity and gender. Uh, but I think the issue with a, an example like that is one, that's one person. Um, so that's not an established pattern. And the fact that it is a relative of mine um, is going to skew my ability to think completely objectively about that, and I might have more personal reaction to challenges of it. Um, so we try and avoid looking at anecdotal evidence and instead look for patterns and academic sources. Uh, finally, what are academic sources? Great question. So this will pertain to a lot of uh, the assignments you do towards the end of the class. Um, academic sources are peer reviewed, they contain citations, and they're published. Um, so what are not academic sources? So a lot of websites are not academic sources. Wikipedia is not an academic source. Um, Googling something is not an academic source. You can use Google to find academic sources, but um, much of what Google um, brings up are things that uh, are posted by kind of anyone because the thing about um, posting on the internet is that pretty much anyone can do it. Um, fact checking is very spurious. So we do tend to, uh, well, we, we, need to look at the sources we're using and those should be academic. For this class, because there's not actually a research component, um, the sources you're using for your assignments are the sources um, in, in the class syllabus. All the readings I'm giving you are academic sources. Um, so when you're using, if you're using those, you are bringing in academic sources. Um, so that should be pretty easy, but I think it's important to understand kind of why. What have I been talking for? Okay, so that is about 40 minutes, uh, which means it's 1.40. Uh, I'm going to stop there. Hi, I'm back. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to stop there for today. Um, well, we're going to stop the recorded part for today. Uh, so it's 1.40. I will, why don't we all just take a break, get a drink of water, and then I will meet you all on the Zoom uh, in about five minutes. So why don't we say... Um, we will meet in Zoom at 1.45. Um, so again, if you started this at one o'clock, you have about five minutes to, uh, to take a break. Uh, if you're watching this several hours earlier, hey, that's awesome. Um, just make sure you come back at 1.45 for the synchronous uh, part of the Zoom. And I look forward to meeting some of you um, over Zoom. Okay, see you soon, bye.